Investing in stocks involves significant risk. You can lose all or a substantial portion of your investment. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. This information is for educational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice. Before investing, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, risk tolerance, financial situation, and investment experience. You should also consult with a qualified financial advisor to determine if a particular investment is suitable for your needs. Usvath Damodaran is a professor at NYU Stern known for his work in valuation. His framework emphasizes a balance between narrative and numbers. Here's the gist, tell the story, understand the company's background and future prospects, identify key drivers, focus on factors like revenue growth, profit margins, and risk that affect value, pick a model, discounted cash flow, DCF, is his preferred method, focusing on future cash flows, connect the dots, use the model to translate the story and drivers into a valuation, refine and iterate. Valuation is an ongoing process, so be prepared to adjust based on new information. Demodoran believes simpler models are often better and emphasizes understanding the reasons behind the numbers. Let's apply the Demodoran framework to get a valuation of Chronology Asia using their most recent annual general meeting and financial quarter report. Step 1. Understand the business. Chronology Asia is a company operating in the IT services sector, specializing in data management solutions. It serves various industries with a focus on providing secure and efficient data storage and management solutions. Let's listen to Chronology Asia CEO Edmund Tay describe this. Okay, so I think uh, number one, um, to understand Chrono, I'm uh, sure, right? Chrono as a company, uh, I, I want you guys to understand the vision of where we're heading. That's all the strategy that we're putting in place. And then we share some of our, of our financial with you guys and uh, I will look on the business growth prospect for uh, 2025. Welcome. So I think all in a nutshell, uh, Chrono aims to be the hybrid cloud technology leader in the enterprise data management space. Okay? So if you feel that this statement is too long, uh, remember one thing about Chrono. Chrono does everything associated with data. And that is our view of uh, where our core competency is. Our core competency is in data. Okay, so then the next question becomes, the why the hell, Chrono, core competency is data and what do we see in data? Right, so again, um, our vision helps to modernize this business workflow. It, it has been this for the last three years. And uh, we know that this has strategic value uh, to our customers. If you, if, you, if, you, if you look at us today, going to a customer, and it's not about hardware, software, um, putting together uh, gears, right? It's not about communicating a discount on paper, it's not about communicating a code. Uh, it's about us putting forward a proposal that meet the customer requirement for data. So, you know, the key word to focus here is about the end to end data management that Chrono can do for you as a customer. So today, if you look at it, you know, we, we have approximately about a thousand customers, you know, um, enriching their data, accelerating their AI data with us. We have about, you know, 40% of those Fortune 100, Fortune ASEAN 500, for China 500 customers that is storing and managing by us. Uh, we have about 30 exabytes of data size, that is stored and protected with our solution. So, you know, the, the core of this slide is to make you understand that our focus is data, and the kind of strategy that we go forward to is end-to-end -end kind of data management strategy to the customers. Okay. Business is steady with consistent revenue over three hundred million for the past three years. They're focusing on new projects, especially in the growing cloud business and the stable infrastructure business. Profits are a mixed bag. Overall profit decreased due to higher expenses, but core business profit, gross profit, stayed the same. Chronology Asia is facing some hurdles, managing currency fluctuations, reducing borrowing costs, and dealing with rising equipment costs as their cloud business expands. They're also working on becoming more cost efficient. The company acknowledges some uncertainty in the larger economic environment but expects things to improve next year. 
they're confident they can adapt to new technologies and market shifts. Chronology Asia's strengths include a varied service portfolio and presence across multiple countries to spread out risk. Their business model centers around subscription services for cloud and traditional IT infrastructure. Now let's listen to their COO Tan Jack Min explain this. Revenue uh, better the last uh, four years, right? For the last three years especially, uh, we have been able to maintain right, our revenue uh, well, stable revenue right, of 200 million and above. So this is just a, um, we continue to focus on sales, but I think with uh, different macro uh, situations going around, right, we continue to focus. As what Evan has uh, shared, we focus on new initiatives, we focus on new programs, right? I think the key two business segments of our business it comes from our infrastructure and our, our cloud as a service uh, business segment. You can see the blue bars refers to the infrastructure, the green bars refers to the cloud. You can see that for the green bars for the cloud, right, it has been yes, it been increasing consistently for the last three years, right? Although the infrastructure may have dropped, but it still contributes a significant part of our business. Okay, this is the four key you know, measurements you know, of the company. Um, but I just want to highlight the last row, right? We look at the, uh, the yellow bars, uh, the yellow columns. I think the key, key message here is that while we, you know, we continue to focus on our business, gross profit has been uh, stable. Although, right, you look at the data, you look at. Let's continue the analysis by determining the discount rate, specifically the weighted average cost of capital. WACC. This critical component reflects the cost of financing and the risk associated with the company's operations. We assume a risk-free rate of 3.5%, a market risk premium of 5.5%, and an equity beta of 1.0. These figures allow us to calculate the cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model, CAPM. The formula for CAPM is the risk-free rate plus the product of the equity beta and the market risk premium. Plugging in our values, we get a cost of equity of 9%. For the cost of debt, we assume a rate of 4.5%, which, after adjusting for the corporate tax rate of 24%, gives us an after-tax cost of debt of 3.42%. Given Chronology Asia's minimal reliance on debt, the WACC approximates the cost of equity at 9%. Next, we forecast the company's future cash flows, projecting revenues and net income for the upcoming years based on past trends. For the financial year 2024, we estimate revenues for Q2 at 60 million ringgit with a net income of 2 million ringgit, Q3 revenues at 62 million ringgit with a net income of 2.1 million ringgit, and Q4 revenues at 65 million ringgit with a net income of 2.3 million ringgit. For the full year 2025, we project revenues of 280 million ringgit and a net income of 8 million ringgit, to estimate the terminal value, which captures the company's value beyond the forecast period. We use a perpetual growth rate of 2.5%. The terminal value is calculated by multiplying the final year's free cash flow by 1 plus the perpetual growth rate and then dividing by the difference between the discount rate and the perpetual growth rate. For Chronology Asia, the final year cash flow is approximately 8 million ringgit, resulting in a terminal value of about 105.6 million ringgit. We then calculate the present value of the future cash flows and the terminal value using the WACC of 9%. Discounting the projected cash flows for 2024 and 2025 and the terminal value to their present values yields a total present value of approximately 89.3 million ringgit, an essential adjustment in this valuation process is accounting for the company's net debt. With a net cash position of 41.59 million ringgit, we add this to the total present value of the future cash flows, resulting in an equity value of approximately 130.89 million ringgit. Finally, to determine the intrinsic share price, we divide the equity value by the number of shares outstanding, which is 890.39 million. This calculation gives us an estimated intrinsic share price of 0.45 ringgit per share. Thus, applying Demodoran's framework provides a detailed and systematic approach to evaluating Chronology Asia's intrinsic value. The resulting share price reflects the company's financial performance, 
future cash flow projections, and net cash position, offering a comprehensive assessment of its market worth.